Okay. This is the uh, uh, Sawa's uh, house is being built for her. Um, we're showing here uh, what we do underneath the render on this uh, building to keep it from getting all those hairline cracks in it. And if it gets loose to the wall uh, someplace, and it probably will, this is to keep it from falling on the floor. <clears throat> it's two by two, uh, about five thirty seconds diameter wire. What's that, a number nine wire or something like that? Uh, but it's about five thirty seconds of an inch, uh, like three millimeters or somewhere around that kind of range. There's five sizes of the wire. This is the middle size. Okay. These little things here we're going to take a closer look at. Those are some of the ways we attach it. It's, it's also uh, done with uh, wire that goes through the holes from one side of the wall to the other. There's uh, three quarters plastic uh, PVC pipes about every 18 inches on 18 inches. Uh, this, the, uh, our artists come up here and fill them in with uh, cement so you can't see them. Like here's one and there's one and there's a row over here, there's one. They're, they're evenly spaced, but uh, he's filled them up. See over here, you can see he's filled this one, this one, this one, right on up the, up the wall. There's, they're closer together at the bottom than the top because the pressure on the concrete's higher. And you notice the, the wire goes into the, uh, the shapes of the, of the wall and the beam. This is actually one casting, this whole side over here. Uh, it was formed up to be 14 inches uh, front to back. And then it had three and a half inch uh, bump outs uh, screwed into the forms, or um, actually faced onto it, and the tie bolts went right through everything, hold it all, just compressed it all together. So we poured a top tie beam, a bottom tie beam, a column on each end, the wall, and it was showing the window in one pour. It took um, about a day and a quarter to set the form up. Uh, all, yeah, all the forms for a 20 some feet of wall, 24 feet of wall. And um, the, um, two thirds of the time is sealing that last inch where it meets another wall. It's, it's really ugly. And we made a sheet metal break out of uh, uh, like mahogany or Nara. We made it out of Nara. And it bent all this, uh, this wire to the, you know, the shape we wanted. And we just put marks on the table and uh, went ahead and made 120 of them, I think. Anyway, the, the wire fits into all this and it's attached to the concrete uh, as a reinforcing thing. Okay, here's how it's attached. Uh, this in the back, that's a 7 16 ordinary nut. That's a, a, a nut for a bolt. You know, it comes from uh, uh, Screw Mart in Tejero. These uh, are called fender washers. It's a, a washer would be like on a, a, a half inch bolt, but it's only got a uh, quarter inch hole in the middle. And this is a uh, two inch concrete nail, about an uh, inch and a quarter of it in the cement. Uh, it takes a four millimeter drilled hole. You can drive a concrete nail into poured concrete, but there's no way I want to spend a day, so I didn't have them do it that way either. We drilled the holes and knocked them in. And, and the, the washers just catch intersections of stuff. Uh, this piece of rope is up here just to keep this thing from falling out on the floor until they get some anchors in it so they can slide it up and down and around. They'll pull this uh, out away from the concrete up here. See, it's, it's uh, bearing down on it right now, but when they, when they get ready to do the render, this this won't be against it. It'll be spaced just like that. It's about uh, mm, three eighths of an inch space between the back of the wire and the wall. Now we didn't use any uh, uh, fiberglass, you know, fiber strands in this. If I'd have thought of it when we started, I would have used it. I think it's a good thing to use, but we didn't think of it. So uh, and plus we have all this wire, and most houses over here have nothing in them. So uh, we're already ahead of the game. Uh, this is showing you more of the wire mesh. Uh, this is going up to a window opening over here. She was standing uh, over someplace over here. This is going to be uh, a circular staircase. 
It's not a spiral staircase which has a central pipe or a helical staircase where the, the center hole is about half the width of the tread. Uh, this is a, a circular staircase. It just winds down from here, down around the bottom, and then it, uh, it comes out uh, off screen there. These plastic pipes here, uh, this is the, uh, uh, the front and back of a tread. But this is the, uh, the front of one tread, and it goes through the nose of the next tread, and then, you know, goes through the, the tre treads above it, and then anchors into the tread, the same thing this one is into. That'll anchor into the back of it. And of course, this one would have gone on down to the one underneath of it. So it goes through a tread, and then it anchors into the, the next one down. And uh, I don't know, there's 18 of those around there, I think. There's the same number out here. Uh, that's if we wanted to, we could uh, uh, put the 5-H uh, the, uh, threaded rods down here with a piece of stainless pipe over them. And the stainless pipe is the spacer. We could, we could hang the treads from that and then have uh, uh, a little piece of something to connect them uh, we would probably connect these uh, these down rods with something to make the hand drill, and that would stabilize the treads. But uh, we're going to pour a uh, central uh, concrete spine down this thing. Uh, you, you can't see the threaded rods are just off the screen over here. There's plenty of pictures of them. Uh, this rounded end over here is just so, so it's not square. Uh, square corners run cracks. Like this would try to run a crack but there's probably four or five rebars on each of those corners in the floor going across that long one and one little shorter and one little shorter, top and bottom. Uh, and this is going up to the, uh, to the roof. This section of the house is not really rooms. People think it's rooms, but it's not. They're not, well, they're eight foot ceilings. They were supposed to be uh, four foot ceilings, but uh, we didn't like the way the roof beams looked and didn't like a lot of things about it, the, 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 the looks of the thing. When we were standing there looking at it, standing on the floor that's, uh, that's down below this view. And I said, what do you think about this? And she told me, I don't like it. And I said, I really don't like it. So what that means? She said, maybe we're going to change it. So what we did, we come up with that spider beam. And uh, at that point, it was no problem to raise these, this stuff up. And it's poured concrete, so once you make one form for, you know, four feet wide, you can put it any way you want. You can turn it down, make eight feet of four foot wide, a tall wall, or uh, four feet wide of eight foot wall. Anyway, this is where that, the stairs will go up to the, the top of the house, and this is uh, Lanai 5. This is another view of Lanai 5. And this is where she was standing when this uh, slideshow started. And this is the rounded end. Uh... I'm not sure what that is there. I guess you're looking at the edge of, of uh, phenolic board, like like that's phenolic board. I think that's what that is. This hole is actually fairly round, and this is a pretty good thing around here, except for one little bump out. You can look in the last picture. Uh, we chiseled that off. You know, we got a, a Makita hammer drill with chisel bits. Okay, Boyette, he's the foreman. Uh, he lives on the property. You can't see his house, but there's a house behind his house, right over here. He's making the things that, uh, the tabs that anchor the uh, windows into the, uh, with security grills, into the walls. He's cutting them off and marking the hole, and the hole is for a bolt that goes into the back of the security grill, and he gets a piece of uh, rebar welded on it that goes into a drilled hole in the wall behind the, behind the grill. They're, they're, they're concealed by the grills. And um, the, one, the one side out front is a hex head bolt going into a, a tall nut, which is welded in the back. You take the bolt out all you want. You're not going to get the grill off by taking the bolts out. But that'll show as you've been there, unless you're smart enough to put them back in the hole. Uh, inside, it gets a, a spline drive bolt. Uh, it's not a Allen bolt. It's a thing that looks like a spline. Uh, it's not a star drive like a, like a, a, a Torx bit. It's, it's a spline. And uh, they weren't too awful cheap. Huh. Anyway, he's, uh, 
using one to mark one and all that, and he's making 140 of them things. And that may be his shop saw sitting right there. He's covering up most of it. This is some of the flat bar that's going to become security grills. Uh, this is the second order. Uh, in some pictures, this looks like it's got 10 or 12 8 inch offset bends all through it. It's lens distortion and the way the sunlight hit the camera. I don't know. Oh, we uh, bought what was supposed to be good wood. At, I won't name the hardware store, but it's not the ones we're using now. We now buy from Patlin. And we also bought from Aaron King King. Had no problem with them either. They're farther away. Prices were competitive but higher. And Patlin is closer to us. And they're just such... Well, both of them are easy to deal with. They're nice people. You know, uh, they, they live in the store. You know, they're, uh, they're, they're excellent business. I, I would deal with either one of them. It's just the, the Patlin, we got to running back and forth getting all the small stuff there because it was, you know, motorcycle access. And the other one was... Uh, really tricycle access, but we bought like a couple 300 of those bars at a time But they look crooked. They're, they're uh, About three sixteenths of an inch thick and they are an inch and seven sixteenths wide They're supposed to be qu quarter by inch and a half, but nothing is what it says over here so you once you get past having them uh, call it what it's not and charging you the cross-sectional area and the weight of a, of a piece you've never seen. Once you get past that, uh, if, if you can just just not listen to the, the, the description, it's how much is an, another piece of this bar. Show them a sample, say how much is a, is a uh, 20 foot, which is really 19 foot 6. It's 6 meters, it's not uh, 20 feet. Once you get the, past the size discrepancy, no problem. Uh, and just buy more. Uh, I think his mother saw on the other side on, on this today's shot. Um, I know he's marking for the bolt hole, but I don't know which method he's using. I think he's probably got a uh, one with a, a sample uh, hole in it, and he's putting it up there and uh, you know punching it. He's got a center punch down here, so once he gets the hole where he wants it, he's punching them. Uh, I like to really punch holes. Uh, this is Lanai number one. Uh, it's now a scrap pile. This is our experienced lumber. Uh, reason it's there and not on the, on the burning pile is we'll go back through that when we need short stuff. And that experienced lumber goes right back into the job site. It's, uh, it's completely dry cocoa lumber. It's really strong when it's dry. And, uh, we make things like, like this thing over here out of it, which backs up, uh, for pouring floors and stuff to give you the edge on the floor. Uh, the, the plywood would be nailed to the front and there'd be a, a stub or something, a piece of rebar in the ground back here. Sometimes the rebar goes, we drill a hole and put it through it. Uh, usually we put it through it. Oh, I know what he's doing. He's putting the hole in the center of these flat bars. They're not to mount the windows. That's a different part altogether. This is the part that goes on the uh, window frame. He needs a hole right in the center. So he's got a pencil. Uh, he's got a, the remains of a little piece of pencil. There's the eraser. And he's taking this piece of flat bar, holding it corner to corner and drawing a line. Then he'll do the other corners line to line. He'll get a pencil line in the center. And when he gets a, a stack of them, He'll come back with, with this punch over here and the hammer somebody's borrowed from him. And he'll beat a good sized van in there. I like to not have to struggle to get the, the uh, drill started. Um, mm, Esaias and Ruhel. And all this lumber over here was... Uh, some supports that was used to, to, to hold this floor up. We just drug a bunch of them near each other and put a few pieces of lumber across it and threw some uh, half-destroyed uh, phenolic board on the top. And that's what our stairs goes up to get up to here, our construction stairs. I know there's way too many pieces in it and too many diagonals, but it, uh, it was cheap. It was, it was laying there in the used lumber pile. Um, 
what you see here is not uh, the first coat of render or splatter coat. This, that's the, the two inch uh, wire mesh. And uh, looks to me like he's putting render on on this uh, section of wall. We bought these, uh, these uh, scaffolds and you, know, you stack them one on top of the other. And then uh, they have these uh, walkways. They can fit on one, two, three, four heights and they can also fit over here if you need a floor. Uh, we paid 1,100 pesos a set for them. They come with a pin that goes to the next one, but they do not come with wheels. You have to buy the wheels. The wheels are uh, uh, 2,200 pesos each times four times the number of stands you got. So we bought one set so we could roll around working on the, uh, the whole house fan, but the rest of them, we just go right on the concrete with them. Uh, but these were made up next to the S&M Bacor. If you go out on the side with the, uh, uh, all the jeepneys all over everything and food stores and everything, you know, um, what do you call those? Kiosks, that side, sort of the back side of the place. Go out, turn right, you go down two blocks, you see Andux Chicken. The place that makes these things is behind Andux Chicken. And they delivered them uh, 60 kilometers to us, which I thought was really nice. We only bought six sets. And apparently six sets in his uh, pickup truck was about all he wanted to carry anyway. Uh, and we bought these, these, these uh, decking pieces. He makes those, but... Uh, I know he's got a ball of string and he's got a smile. <laughs> you wouldn't believe the guy that it's all closed. He, you see the uh, what what of him is hanging out. These people, thin as they are, they can pick up a 120 pound uh, bag of gravel and walk upstairs with it. Don't know how they do it. Um, we try to we our construction stairs are better than the stairs in most people's homes. I don't care how how high priced your house is, these things are uh, are better better than your house. There's wider treads. Uh, they're seven inches uh, by a twelve inch tread. They got a toe kick of about four inches. They're absolutely strong. But uh, I got no other way to get it up there. And I could you put less in a bag and use more bags. But they like to do that. That's what they uh, are used to doing. So I don't argue with them. If they want to do it that way, it's Oh, this is our artist, this is Oka. He does the oil paintings. Uh, he came to uh, Luzon, this island, to do ice sculpture for a resort. Resort went under in about two years from lack of maintenance, so they quit throwing big parties, and he was unemployed. But he built uh, our nativity scene. That's all the uh, uh, Mary and Joseph and the baby and a sheep and a donkey and a baby donkey and a, all the stuff that was in the barn that night. Uh, he built them out of concrete. Really nice work. And today he's putting render up uh, just to have a job. He told me he he, uh, he was a painter and he painted uh, some artist paintings. We have them hanging on the wall here. I said, okay, uh, come on out, uh, you know, Monday morning. Uh, they start at seven, we'll get there at nine and we'll show you what, what we're gonna do. He come out and he's standing there and says, okay, uh, we wanna paint these walls and these concrete forms. <laughs> he says, you do paint houses, don't you? And he says, yeah, I said, well, that's, that's the painting we got is painting houses, and we'll pay you the same as we pay you for the uh, other work. He didn't say a thing. He doesn't really speak a lot of English, but uh, my Asawa, she explained it to him. And uh, he painted the house pretty quick, too. He painted the house we're staying in, not the, not the one we're building. I, he's 50 years old, and uh, agile as a cat. And there's Ruhel, he's happy about something. Uh, if you think that Esaias is thin, this guy here, he's nothing but bones. Uh, he's a, a tends some land and farms rice right beside us. Uh, we poured the concrete on the, uh, the living level down there with water pumped out of a well and carried in buckets and then poured into drums right at the mixer. And uh, he would spend two days uh, pumping water and toting it with one of those bamboo uh, sticks over his shoulder. He poured, pulled all the water to pour that first floor, the floors, the columns, the beams. Now our columns are uh, like 30 inches by 32, and our beams are 14 by 24. 
and the tie beams are uh, 18 by 24. That's a lot of bags of cement. And the weight of the water equals the weight of the cement. So uh, I don't know how many tons of water he poured. But uh, we told him where the next place would be, and he'd find the empty barrels and put it over there, and then he'd dip the, ba the water out of uh, uh, any barrels that we hadn't finished up with and carry it over to where they could dump the, that in it too. Save pumping it out of the well. And that well pump is always broke down. I just did a video on the replacement for it. We're going to make uh, our own pump. That, that same pump works uh, at the bearing guy level for uh, years and years and years. It supplies a whole town. We can't get it to stay together three or four days at a time. I spent almost as much time working on it as he did pumping it. This shows you how long of a wall we pour at a time. Uh, and this is a, a bottom beam, top beam, lift column, right column, window opening. And it's got the jam already in it when it's poured. And uh, this is... Uh, uh, we do all the rebar for a level the same day because we, we paint some lines on the floor and put uh, felt the pin on them. And uh, that gives us the shape of the rectangle. And then we have boards with notches in them. So we lay one this way and one that way. They're 18 feet long. They don't go the whole way. They go most of it. And we lay all the vertical bars in that. And then we toss out the horizontal bars on there. And we have other notch boards. And these, not, these are not all the same distance apart, the horizontals. They're according to the, the load. They're close together at the bottom. There's three of them in 10 inches at the bottom. And then they go 10 inches on center up to, to near the top. And they go back to that uh, close spacing at the top. The difference between f feeling safe in, <laughs> in this house and not is like two bars over the height of the wall. If, if I had two more bars, I could put them in that wall. And so I did. <laughs> but if I left them out, I wouldn't really feel bad about it. This over here, this is our construction stairs, uh, and and the the black things you see here is uh, used for an oily board, and that's how we get the mixer up and down. That's our ramp for the mixer. So, to run a a, a concrete mixer up and down there with a the big blue rope, uh, nobody's allowed underneath of it or anywhere down there. If it gets away, let it go. You know, we either fix it or buy another one. But nobody gets underneath of it. And we stand there and glare at them. Anybody tries to do it, and they look at you, and, and they and then you see them stepping back where they came from. They won't they won't cross you that much. Anyway, that's our ramp. If it'll hold the mixer, all that iron, it'll sure hold a guy walking up and down. Um, this this video is 23 minutes. Just to make them more more shorter, let's start, let's stop here. If you learned anything, you can give us a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give us a thumbs down. And like I sometimes say, if you give us a thumbs down, you're allowed to comment and say what you didn't like about it. Uh, we're on video 60 or something now. So uh, we're not really set in our ways like you think we are. But there's nobody has really given us uh, a lot of thumbs down and negative comments to, to steer us by. So uh, we're probably going to do, do what we've been doing. Anyway, uh, uh Say a little prayer, have a nice day, and we're going to try to turn this off.